So today I'm going to show you how to sort a dripping uh, toilet seat. Uh, this is where the water trickles down like a little waterfall and this is usually caused by possibly two things. This could be the outlet valve or a combination of the outlet valve and the inlet valve washer. So first of all this is a this system type is an ideal standard and it's not screwed on or anything like that. Uh, all you need to do with this one is to lift it off. I'm just going to do that now. So I've lifted it off. There we go. And that's what it looks like. As you can see there, it just pushes down. So you've got the one button there and if you push it through it pushes the whole lot. So you get a full flush. So now that I've put that out of the way, this is one that I actually fixed. Um, as you can see, there's no dribbles at all here from the inlet valve. And then this is the outlet valve. So obviously when you flush, um, what's going to happen, it's going to release the water uh, from the very bottom here. And there's a great big massive washer at the bottom there. I'm going to take this off and show you how to clean this or possibly replace it. It might not need replaced, but it depends how long it's been in there. So this is what happens when you flush with just one button. If I press this button down. So that releases the water into the toilet. And then as you can see here it's filling up. And what you're after here when it fills up is absolutely no dribbles whatsoever. So I didn't flush too much so it fills up pretty quick. And what you'll get at the bottom there is there's a float at the bottom. A uh, big black thing that just rises, rises up and it gets a certain level and this here shuts it off. It uses like air pressure to shut it off. And there's a little rubber underneath this. I'm going to take that out and show you. A little tiny little rubber that actually seals a hole and then it's like a... a Here it is just about to fill up and it should stop and there should be no dribbles whatsoever. Eventually it will just shut off. Dead silence. Now as opposed to my other one which is quite dirty, I'm going to show you that now. I'll pause the video and I'll show you this one. So I'm now in the other toilet and I hope you can hear and see if I go quiet for a second or two. You can see there's quite a dribble coming from the inlet valve the way down here. And this is caused by a little rubber flange that's inside. I'll show you what that flange looks like in a minute. It seemed to have stopped when I just touched it. For some reason. Uh, just at the side here. I can still see dribbles coming in. Now at the moment the level is away down here where my screwdriver is but eventually it will come up to here and that's too high and that eventually is what causes the water to leak out of the inlet valve into the toilet and give you that little waterfall. So the reason I've made this video is because someone else helped me with a video on YouTube on how to sort uh, a toilet that constantly drips water and also dribbles water into the toilet seat. Now the dribble coming into the toilet seat is caused by the outlet valve and the dribble uh, coming in is called by the, caused, by, sorry, caused by the inlet valve. So you've got water just constantly trickling away. This one I've actually fixed and I'm going to show you how to fix this but there's some things that you might need. Uh, one thing is maybe have a pair of gloves or rubber gloves or whatever uh, when you're handling this because uh, it can be a wee bit tight especially this one here to unlock it to get it out. This one is extremely simple to take out and also possibly to clean the big washer that's at the bottom of this. You'll see what I mean when I take it out and then you'll get this one here uh, it's a wee bit more difficult to replace, but it's not as difficult as you might think. The person that I watched the video on this, he didn't take the red arm completely off. This will totally unscrew 
and come out with a big black float at the bottom there. I'll put my light on so you can see this black float. So you can see the float at the bottom there. Um, this will totally unscrew. Uh, there's no nut at the bottom of this one, but be careful if there is one on yours. Um, but uh, so that you can take this completely out so that you can replace the little rubber uh, what would you say, a tiny little rubber washer underneath this. I'll explain that more when I take this off. Now, I'm just going to pause the video for a second. So this is a, an ideal standard toilet, um, and the top part comes off very easy. This one just lifts off, just lift off in a way. Some of them you have to unscrew the flusher part here, just unscrew it to get the whole thing off. The parts that you need for this and the part that I'm replacing, I'll just show you in a second. I'll just go and get it. I only had to replace this part here. So if I can get the light for you. So that's what it looks like. Very difficult. See, now I have a, a, a slight tremor, so I can't hold them up very easily. I'll probably shake right out my hand. So this is what it looks like. Now the most important thing is to get one with a tiny little ridge on it. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. Tiny little ridge on it. Anyway, I actually have the part here in a bag for you. It comes as a little kit. You can buy these parts individually. But I actually have the part uh, and the, the, the parts and the part number which is in this little bag. There you go. Now, you might want to pause the video to get the part number you see at the top here. Servicing kit, it's called. SV90167. And what you get in here is you've got this tiny little piece, tiny little rubber washer. That goes in the red arm I was talking about. It's underneath it. That's the part that I replaced to stop the dribble. And I'll tell you why I just replaced that. This here goes inside the inlet valve it gets pushed in and it acts as a filter this one here if you've got too much pressure coming in to your inlet valve you can screw this in at the point where you actually screw it into the water source and it will actually slow down the the, the pressure for you if you turn the tap on full um, I didn't need to use that I didn't bother using that, but I used these two pieces here, the very small rubber and this one here. Now, this is my other toilet, and this is the one I'm going to repair. I'll just shut this door over, my wife's watching the TV. Um, this is the one I'm going to repair. Now, you can see it's extremely dirty. Uh, this is your um, outlet valve, your inlet valve. And there's a little rubber washer underneath here. That tiny little rubber washer I've shown you is right underneath that arm there. And then the, the flange washer, the bigger part, is underneath this bit here. That there is just mould. That's all that is. You could spray silt it and it's something on it to remove the mould. Now you see the water level is currently there. And eventually it'll get up to here. When it gets higher, this whole float will be covered in water which in turn causes an overflow on this, the outlet valve, which creates the small waterfall that you get in your toilet. And that's usually a telltale sign. Now, if I was to leave this for a while, it's actually not bad. I don't really need to replace it just now, but I'm going to. Um, if, if it was left too long, eventually this leaks more and more. And then all the water is coming down through this. Now, that could be caused by the rubber washer that's at the bottom of this when I take this out. And uh, this keeps filling up. So then you get an overflow, as I said, and you get water dribbling in. Now, of course, you need to turn the water off. So this is just right at the bottom of our toilet. So that little screw you see there, um, you just need to turn that a quarter turn. It can either be anti-clockwise Clockwise, just a quarter turn, not a half turn, just quarter turn. So basically, if the groove is pointing up the way, it means the water's turned on. So that's all I need to do, first of all, before I do any work here. So I've turned the water off, and now I'm going to flush. Now, 
and just drain it as much as possible. So I've got the water turned off, so the first stage I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and then have a look at the washer underneath. Uh, might just need a clean. So it's very simple, this one. Uh, if I take it off, uh, it's very difficult to see in the video, so I'm going to pause this and move it so that you can see it better. So now that the water's completely turned off, it's drained, I'm just pointing at this here. You see where the screwdriver is? You basically just turn this a tiny little bit anti-clockwise and it'll just unhook. It's just two little hooks that hold it on. It's not screwed on. Some may be screwed on, some may not. So here goes. I've never tried this one. The one next door was easy. This one's proven a wee bit more tighter. I'm going to push it down and pull up at the same time and then just unhooks. So I'm going to take it out and see it. There it is. And that's what it looks like. Now it might have water in it so be careful uh, you don't get water everywhere. So that's it. It's out and it's out. I just poured water everywhere. I'll turn it upside down and just pour the water out. That's it. Okay, water's out. Nothing that you can't get something to wipe up. So now I'm on part two here. I don't want the videos to be too long. Um, I've still got to take this bit off. Um, that's a wee bit more difficult that bit to take off. And I've not got any gloves on to do that. So I'm just going to give it a bash without any gloves on. So here goes. Now you have to turn this, hold it tight and turn it anti-clockwise until it unhooks which it should unhook this one is a bit more difficult than the one next door that's it, the click, I heard the click and it comes off that's it, it's off now so what I'm now going to do is unscrew this all the way and that's noisy And see I'm just unscrewing this whole thing and obviously when I put this back on it'll be spot clean I'm going to use a toothbrush to clean that not the one I used to brush my teeth all the way off you can tell the water's off because that's where your water comes in and there's the little valve underneath it I can stop the hands shaking for a minute and you can see there so it's full of guns but the this here is actually not bad. It's not as bad as the other one was. But it has got a bit of wear and tear to it and that's what's causing the leak coming out of this part here when the water comes in. So this should actually press down on that bit there. Just where in point it, it pushes down on it and stops uh, the water from coming out. But there's also a little tiny rubber underneath the black arm here. But once I've cleaned it all up, then I'll be able to show you that. So I'm just going to go downstairs and clean all this. So this is the outlet valve. And in order to access it, you see it says turn that, that way when it's out. So it's actually in the machine way, in the system like that. So then you just uh, turn it to access or clip it in using these little clips here. Now this is what the washer looks like at the bottom. That's what needs cleaned. All that needs cleaned. So I'm going to clean that with uh, just in the sink with water and take that stuff off and it becomes very rubbery. So I'll take that off with a screwdriver just underneath there and then take it off. And once I take it off I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Secondly, this little flange here has to come out, which is quite easy. You just pull it out. You can get it. We've got it. It's out. It was just in hot water, and you see why you need the ridge because it needs to seal in there in order to sort this properly. So you need one that's got a little ridge on it like that, and that's the one I've just bought. Looks like it looks like that. Okay. And it also it has to go back in that way and fit into the little ridge here all the way around. 
this here is a bit more difficult to take off. There's tiny little red lugs, as you can see there. You should prise that gently with a small screwdriver to get it off, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prise that open to get this out, and then I'll show you what that's like underneath. I'll try and do this on camera, but it's quite difficult. Got to get it right so in here. You need to prise that open and just try and ease this out. Try it again. Okay, watch you don't break it. So I'm going to do it off camera. Just push that open. Finally, I got it. You can see there's two little lugs there that just fit into that there. You can only get in one way and you just pop it in, back in again. Getting it out is quite difficult, so make sure you use a tiny wee flat blade like that. And you just have to prise these little things back, but not too much, and then flick it out with a screwdriver. So what you've got is a tiny little hole there. You can see that tiny little hole just there. I can keep my hand steady. Tiny little hole to get up to the camera. And all this does, this little rubber piece underneath, remember the tiny little rubber piece that was in the bag that I was showing you? You just replace that. This one's actually quite good. It's not got um, a little indentation hole like the other one did. This one's actually quite smooth, but seeing as because I've got it, I'm just going to replace it. Okay, now we'll put all that aside. And we'll try... The big one now, it's a bit messy, the big one. Let's put all this crap on it. You can pop that down and then just hold it like that. So, so basically what it does, this, when you press these things here, you can see it just, if I do that, press the top bit there, it just, so when you're flushing, you push the button down and that pulls up and lets the water through. And then when it let go, when you let go, it creates a sort of suction with the rubber and seals off the hole so it doesn't let any more water through. So if this is really gunged up, then it's going to seep some water through into the pan. So I'm just going to prise this off. That's how I did the other one. Just try to take it off. Try not to damage it. I use a pair of noses because it's quite slippy when it's gungy. You see there, pulling it out. I'm getting it out. Now, so you can actually take this piece here off. When you buy a new one, you get this piece as well and you can replace that, but I don't need to. I'm going to use a toothbrush to go in there and clean that. And this actually looks in quite good nick. It's just gunged up, as you can see, so I'm going to clean that and then put it back on. That's it. <coughs> back again with uh, all the bits and pieces. Now, what comes with the pack that you actually buy, the kit, uh, the Univalve kit, uh, is the instructions. It also tells you how it all works, as you can see here and here. So this little valve here closes over onto this bit here, which is pushed in to the inlet valve. That's pushed in. And then that there pushes on top of that to seal it off. And this little piece here, I'm going to put this into the arm that I've got off. As you can see there. That's it there. So I'm going to remove that and replace it with a new one. I'm not going to replace that. But the instruction is quite good. It tells you how it all works and so on. So I'll shove the things out of the way that I'm not going to use. I've actually cleaned that as well. Nice and clean and dried it off with some kitchen roll. So a good old toothbrush and kitchen roll. So as you can see there. That's that, nice and clean. And so is this. This is nice and clean now. Cleaned inside it as well with a toothbrush. As much as I can. And just make sure it all still works okay. It's still got a little bit of water on it, but that's fine. This lives in water, so that doesn't matter. So put that aside just now. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and take this little thing out. 
uh, with a screwdriver. So, and for somebody with a shaky hand, I do quite well. So don't be scared to just be rough with it and push it out so it's out. And you can't go wrong which way it goes in. You can see there it's got a hole at the other end. And that actually just pops in to that little bit there, as you can see. Okay, so get the new one, put the old one aside. Get the new one, don't drop it, that's why I've got the kitchen roll here. On the garden bench, and just get it, push it in, that's it. Just push it tight, that's it. So remember, it closes over that little hole there. Just closes over the little hole and creates an airlock and that's what uh, pushes this valve down here so that it shuts off the water. Okay. Now, this is a new, they call it diaphragm or flange or whatever and you see it's got a small ridge on it. So what I'm going to do is to slot that into the ridge there. Okay. And this is this piece nearly done. However, before I do that, I'm going to put this back on. Now this is very difficult, so it's really just a snap. You still need the screwdriver, so I'm going to go off camera just now with this. Actually, it went on easier than the last one, because this is my second attempt, and that's it. So that will just move up there and shut off the little hole that's there. And it's linked to this. So you need a good airtight lock on this, so that's what I'm going to do now. To push that on, that was quite easy. If you dry it all before you do anything, then it makes it easier to put it in. So that's it, fully fitted in. That's a bit ready. Actually, that's probably the hardest bit, so I'll put that aside. Well, putting this flange back on, this washer here onto there is quite difficult, so basically you're pushing it over that, and I'll show you what the finished article's like when I'm done. That's it finished. Now, the main thing is, if I put that down, it doesn't matter if there's a wee gap there, push it down as much as you can, but as long as it goes beyond the little ridge there, as you can see there, it pushes over, it's like fitting a tyre to a bike. And it's still very rubbery and very hard to put on. That means it's going to get a good seal. And it has got a good seal. So obviously that is all going to press down uniformly to seal off, to stop any water dribbling out. If water does dribble out, try and get that down a bit further if you can. This bit here can come off, but it won't help that much. You don't want it flush against this bit here. So that there's a little uh, give in that and play in it when it pushes down. Because when it pushes down, the part it pushes into is slightly bevelled anyway. So that's that done. So all that remains now is to go back upstairs and fit it all. Now what I should have said was, um, you'll notice the old and the new one are slightly different. This one's got ridges on it, that's the old one. The new one is smooth, that doesn't matter. What matters is the seal in the ridge. Uh, it matters about that, that seal that you get when you push that in. This one is a bit worn, uh, looking at it closely in the daylight here. Uh, these parts are all worn away. So they're not getting a good seal when they're pushing down onto the inlet valve. And that's where they need a good seal. And that's what's the problem here. Whereas this one, obviously, is a lot better, as you can see there. Much, much better. So... Let's go and fit this now. Right, this should be the final part of the video. And if I shine my torch down there, you can see the receptacle piece for the uh, outlet valve. And also, you can see just across here on the left hand side, you've got your inlet valve. And that's what we're going to fit first. It allows me to move my hand around in here unhindered. So, first of all, I need to get this up. I'm going to start screwing this in before I go any further. Just enough to get it started. 
thank goodness has moved about. So now I'm going to fit this on. So it's seated down quite well. So just got to hold it the other bit and it should click. And that clicks straight away. The reason that clicked very quickly is because uh, I cleaned the receiver, but then light bulb, I cleaned everything, made sure all the debris was off and so on. So that's that bit fitted. And then I can screw this down a bit more because we're hoping the valve will come up to about here, uh, not too far, and then close it off. I can feel, I feel it there, it's quite, quite strong, the, the new rubber I fitted inside that bit there. That's it, so I'll leave it at that just now. And now let's put the outlet valve in. Okay, and remember that just clicks in when you put it in. So it's the other way around. Put that down. And I just push and turn. This one's a bit more difficult. Oh, wrong way around. Trying to do it the wrong way. That's it, it clicks in place. That's it, totally in place now. Okay. So I just do that a few times and you hear it bob up and down. So hopefully everything's okay. So I'll just get my screwdriver and turn the motor back on. It's always in a very awkward place. So when the float rises, it'll uh, shut off the wheat air hole and it should shut off the water. It all depends on how much pressure we've got, how fast the water off, man. Eventually, should start seeing the float rise. water in it. Um, you, can use, you can change the water level by turning this screw here. So if I turn this screw so it's lower down, um, I'll flush a wee bit. I'm sure. Turn this screw. Anti-clockwise I'm turning the screw so that it shuts off quicker. So it doesn't go all the way up to this black line. There we go. So I think basically if this is longer, this screw, it will shut off the water a lot quicker. And it should just shut the water off just like that. now shut off. No dribbles. But just keep an eye on it over a few days uh, to see what happens. So that's the end of the video. There's a few bits of garbage in here but hopefully through time that will flush away and you can see it's not coming up to the black line. Neither will it come up near the black line because the float's going to stop that. So that's it. So just make sure you clean everything properly and then dry it off before you put your rubber washers in and so on especially the tiny little washer that goes in underneath this. Make sure it's all clean and especially the this bit here and the bit that it fits into, especially the bits that clicks into. Now you must get that click when you turn it in order to seal it and that's it. Stops dribbling. 
and that will stop your little overflow in the toilet seat. That's it. Thanks for watching and sorry about the shaky hand but hopefully this will help and let me know what you think.